Hi there, Emmett Ryan here, and we are dangerously close to the World Cup. So it's kind of time to talk about its biggest star, isn't it? Hi there, folks. So yes, we're of course going to talk about Luka Doncic today, but this is the first time I've been in this spot, talking to y'all, me to the camera, in quite a while. Obviously had a couple of videos go up from the Irish women's game at the weekend, just recently there, but... There's a bit of an elephant in the room. We've not been active here, and many of you will know why, some of you won't. So I'm just going to address that quickly, and then we'll get to our main subject today. Uh, as many of you will know, like I was saying, my father passed away there in May. Uh, that basically led to a shutdown in content here, really, for, uh, well, a couple of months, really, up until the weekend just gone. Because uh, I had a lot of families to deal with. It was obviously very tough on me. I've gotten a lot of support from all of you. That's meant a lot to me. Thank you. Uh, my friends, my family, they've all been there for me. Obviously, I've been there for my family too. But yeah, you know, it's been tough. And um, I've had to deal with a lot. And uh, so those of you visiting the site will notice that we've got nothing up since literally the Basketball Champions League final weekend. Never mind the EuroLeague final weekend. Huge thanks to Moshe Barda, a good friend of mine. You should all follow him. Uh, Moses B1 on Twitter. And because he got some some videos up from the early final four, so I just want to say thanks to you all. We are back now in the run up to the World Cup. Uh, Japan, Indonesia, Philippines. We'll be in Philippines, but uh, we're going to be talking about one of the other players uh, first. And of course, the player we're going to talk about today is Luka Doncic, because we need to talk about Luka. So first up, yeah, uh, usage is definitely going to be an issue here. The minutes Luca played in the Eurobasket of 2022, which was meant to be 2021, but you know, the pandemic and stuff happened, they were heavy. But it wasn't just the minutes. The minutes were very easy to point at. But the other issue really, really was usage on the court. It wasn't just that he was on the floor a lot. It was that pretty much everything was going through him. He was on the floor for the guts of 40 minutes every day, every game, and active like if Slovenia had possession he was the guy and you might go well obviously he's the guy he's one of the greatest players alive today yeah duh but the point is if you are trying to win a tournament format which is essentially a marathon of sprints you've got a lot of games against some really top opposition where you're being leaned on you've got to gamble a bit and the gambling is not on making sure your star gets a job done every time it's kind of knowing when to not need the W or not need him to get the W if nothing else and Slovenia in the last Eurobasket kind of wrote the script for how to not do that they were extraordinary to watch in the group phase unfortunately there's four knockout games in Eurobasket afterwards we'll get to that with the World Cup in a second and yeah they didn't do well in those. They got to the last 16, obviously, but were then summarily dumped out by a Polish side, which was also leaning heavily on its star, Panitka. But the difference was, they weren't running Panitka into the ground. They were absolutely burning him out. And Poland looked more balanced, more organized, and frankly, had more gas in the tank. So he gets to the World Cup now, and the question really is, what are they going to do with Luka? Um, because, you know... <sighs> He is kind of a big deal. He is the face of this tournament in many respects. And yet here we are with this extraordinary talent. Like he was a huge driving force in Slovenia's extraordinary 2017 Eurobasket win. Nearly carried them to an Olympic medal. Like, you know, an injured hand was essentially the difference between Slovenia getting to the final, really. Never mind getting a medal and not. And then obviously again was the superstar extraordinaire for the front half of Eurobasket. We've got a World Cup now where it's three group games. you got to win two of those realistically to progress. Very doable, Slovenia. But then you got a second group phase where you, of course, have another two games because the team that, from your group that comes through with you and you play two other teams from another group. You know how it works. It's five games before the quarterfinals. Very, very manageable if you're smart. It's just there's more effective elimination games early for Slovenia because of the way this works, where you've eventually got two round of 16 games. Well, it is two round of 16 games, and with losing one of them isn't exactly a, a benefit, <laughs> I think it's safe to say. You're gambling a bit more, essentially, is what I'm trying to say, when you're going through a situation like this format of a World Cup. And if Slovenia is serious about getting a medal, or even challenging for the whole thing, and certainly Slovenia, if it's got Luka in the squad, is thinking, 
medal at worst, or at least contending for a medal at worst, like, you know, it wants to be winning a quarterfinal, there's no doubt about that, it needs to ensure they don't run him into the ground. And of course, there's another thing to consider here. So there's nothing to consider here as well, which is, of course, no Goran, no Kankar. Uh, in the case of Goran, he just confirmed he's obviously at a certain age now as well. We expect, possibly by the time this video goes up, to know his new NBA team soon. But there's no Goran here. So that's one of the three other players. So two other players who played insane minutes with Sofia in the last year of Basel gone. Vlako Kankar, also not playing, because he had a small thing called getting to the NBA Finals. And that's going to come up, by the way, in a second. And so, again, heavy, long season. Does he really want to be utterly gassed going into title defence here? Of course not. So that's two players immediately gone who were the two other options. That means Slovenia needs to be smarter. But in a way, it also means Slovenia has been forced to be smarter, which I think is a benefit. Because no coach, not, a, not, not even the most iso ball of iso ball gurus going, can you really be a guru when it's all iceball? I don't know. But not even the most advocate of iceball, guys, is going to say, just give it to that guy, at least in the modern era. And that basically is forcing Slovenia to rethink things. We saw it. He was arrested against Team USA, uh, which is also a bit clever because, of course, Slovenia didn't really want to show their hand if they face USA in the World Cup of how they're going to use Luka. So smart, I think, but also they're showing that they are willing to be smart in terms of how they use Luka, what they do with him, and essentially make sure that they have a better rested, better used Luka Doncic. So that is actually giving me hope. So absences are oddly a benefit here. And there's one other thing which is unusually a benefit too. So on the face of things, of course, not having a long playoff run is a benefit to Luka going into a major championship. We saw Eurobasket how easily he got gassed by that quarterfinal, although a lot more of that was to do with being, you know, ga gassed from just being overused. But he was playing heavy basketball consistently deep into the season with the Mavs that previous summer, had very little time to break before just joining up with the national team, getting ready for Eurobasket, and, and of course playing World Cup qualifiers before then, don't forget, and then going again. And yeah, of course he was gassed. Now, because of the Mavs' extraordinary collapse last season, he kind of has had a real break. Like, of course, he got engaged. Great for Luca, Good man. Delighted for him. And that should be putting him in better place. Because, remember, rest isn't just about the physical body. It's about this fella, too. And there was a lot to rest up from with Dallas's uh, post-trade -tra deadline, uh, well, slide. Like, you know, the addition of Kyrie was, ooh, big deal, big deal. Then it turned out it didn't really work for any approach to defense whatsoever. And we're not here to talk the Mavs, although we will briefly mention the Mavs in a second. But for Slovenia, oddly, Luka having a release, really, by joining up with the national team, because he's free of all that, ugh, of the end of last season, essentially. He's coming into a fresh thing. Obviously, everybody adores him, but not in the sort of way that it almost became desperate vibes in Dallas, where Slovenia it's a case of, you the guy, let's see what we can do here, man. We believe in you. We'll do this. And yeah, of course, it's not a nearly as talented a team overall as Dallas, but it's, by its very nature, going to be less dysfunctional than Dallas was tail end of last season in the NBA. So, in a way, you know, between the rest, physically and mentally, and just a change in environment, I think that'll actually set Luca up for a very interesting World Cup. A final note, just before we go, uh, is for the Mavs. This, by the way, is a, not the worst thing for you. I would say a good thing. Missing the playoffs is rarely a good thing. Although I'm sure people who are even nerdier than me will say, well, actually, Emmett, we're not here for the well actions. We're here, to, we're here to see people win basketball games. Because Luca going into this World Cup, you know, with sort of that free release where this is just its own thing. It's not continuation on from the long drive, then the exit. Then he had a long drive and then an exit. And he had a season that was feeling like a long drive. And then the exit wasn't the same, so it wasn't quite the same vibes. He's going in here with fresh approach. Could come out with positive vibes, even if it's a similar exit. Even if they go out, like in the second group phase, I don't expect him to be in trouble in the first group phase. Uh, you know, he probably is going to rejoin his teammates in Dallas 
a bit more refreshed, sir, I will, I would be shocked if it's not a lot more refreshed than he was leaving Berlin last year. So that should probably put him in a better mood going into this season. And yeah, that's all I gotta say. So listen, I hope you all enjoyed that. We will be back with more of these and other players between now and the World Cup starting. Uh, I will actually be late to the World Cup, by the way, um, because I really, really, really love my girlfriend and want to do a couple of things with her the weekend it starts. Those have to be in Ireland. If you may not be aware, the World Cup is not in Ireland. I'll be flying to Manila the Sunday uh, after the World Cup starts, but I will be landing in time to catch a certain game in Manila featuring... That was a rematch from 2006 that a lot of you all know about. But between now and the next video, one thing we really need to ask you all to do, please, please, please subscribe. We're on a drive to 1,000. It's a huge, huge difference for us, folks. If we get 1,000 subs, YouTube has to start paying us. That's just the end game here. Like, obviously, everything after 1,000 even better. But once we get to 1,000, our ability to make more videos and, frankly, have better equipment uh, is just going to go this way. Uh, even, like, you know, the small checks from YouTube, we're talking, like, the 70 euros a month, they make a difference. I'm not joking. So, listen, let's get to 1,000 subs. Get on it. Get your friends on it. And thank you, and see you soon.